back everyone to the next video in our tutorial series on building a brick breaker game in Unity. This is Mike Page with Scripting is Fun. In this video we're going to start adding sounds and music to our game. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at a few sounds that we can use and then we'll figure out how to tie those in. Off the asset store, I just searched for music 8 bit free. I'm going with an 8 bit feel for this game. And I found this one here for free 8 bit free pack volume 1. And I just downloaded and installed that. I also had a package from earlier. I don't know if it's still available, but it's a. Uh, um, but it's a 8-bit uh, sound effects pack. So you can find a lot of things for free in the asset store uh, that you could use for sound files for this. So I'm going to use um, a, add a sound to when uh, the ball bounces off a brick. And I found this one here that is called Pickup 1. And if I hit play, you'll hear it. So just a little kind of a bounce sound there. So I'm going to be attaching that uh, to the ball so that it will play that sound every time that it hits a brick. So it will give a bounce off sound there like that. We'll give that a try and see how that sounds. So we're going to go to, the, to our ball out here in the scene. And if I want this ball to play a sound, I need to add a component to it that will do that. So I'm going to go down to Add Component. I'm going to go to audio and I'm going to add an audio source. An audio source allows us to specify an audio clip and then uh, we can um, set some different settings for it to make it play. But to assign the audio clip, I'm just going to drag it right here into the audio clip box. I don't want it to play automatically when the game starts. So I'm going to uncheck play on awake. And then what we're going to have to do is a little bit of scripting in our in our ball script here uh, so that when it hits a brick it knows to play uh, its audio source sound. So let's go into the ball script. Here in the ball script we are going to need to add a variable here. So we'll just make this, uh, this does not have to be public, so we're just going to make an audio source variable and we'll just call this uh, audio and then when the game starts we're going to go ahead and use a get component to just get a reference to the audio source that's on our ball here so, all right so in start function we're going to use the get component method here like we did before so we'll just say audio equals and then we'll say get component the component I want is an audio source like that so that should get us a link into our audio source. And then whenever we want it to play, we can just tell the audio source to play its sound. So we're going to go to on trigger enter where we have hit a brick. And we're doing all this stuff now when we hit a brick. So somewhere in there we just want it to uh, make it sound. So we can just do that anywhere in here. Let's go ahead and just maybe add it. Let's see, this is if it breaks. So maybe we'll want another sound to play if the brick actually breaks. We'll see, though. Um, this is if it doesn't break. This is if it's just a brick. So let's just put it down here at the bottom so that if it's just a brick at all, it will play the sound. So all we have to do is say audio.play, and that will cause it to play that clip once through. All right? So let's just see if we get some audio now when we go out here and play our game. All right, here we go. So you see, every time I hit a brick now, it is playing its sound. So there we go. We've got it playing the sound anytime it bounces off the brick. Now, if you wanted to, we can make it play the sound anytime it bounces off of anything. Um, if that would make more sense, but uh, for now let's just have it make a sound when it bounces off the brick. So that's as easy as uh, making the audio play. Uh, we could also add some sort of an audio to the bricks for when they are broken. Um, they'll play a different sound. Um, we can kind of layer those sounds. Let's, 
Okay, so if we want to make an explosion sound or some sort of a sound when the brick uh, is destroyed, we could certainly do that. Right now we're instantiating it in our explosion effect. So let's find our explosion effect here. Here it is. And uh, we could just add an audio source to our explosion so that when the explosion is created, it plays a sound effect. So let's do that. Let's go to Add Component, Audio, Audio Source. Let's feed it in a sound clip. I'm going to use this Explosion 2 sound effect. We'll try that one out. And then we're going to leave Play on Awake checked. What will happen now is as soon as this particle effect is instantiated, it will play this sound one time through. So let's see, we, we changed that on the prefab, so we should be good to go. Let's try playing and see if we get an explosion sound as well. And we are. Now that explosion sound is kind of long, maybe a little bit more than we need it to be. So I'm not sure if I like that explosion sound or not takes so long to finish playing but you see the idea of what we've got going on here maybe we'll try a different let, let's try loading in uh, let's try loading in explosion one which is a little lighter of an explosion let's see how that one sounds maybe better. I think I'll leave that one for now. Okay, so you can see we've got that going on. So we have our uh, bricks making an explosion sound as well. And we can just do all sorts of different sounds here if we want to. We could add a sound uh, when it bounces off the paddle. We could add a sound for when we fire it from the paddle. Um, I'm not going to go add a lot of sounds here. You can kind of customize your game how you want to see it customized. So usually for background music, the best thing to do is just to hang it on your camera. And that's because your camera has what's called an audio listener. And the audio listener is the ears in your game. That's the point from which we're hearing sound. Of course, our camera is right here, center of our scene, and back just a little bit. So we will actually kind of hear the sound shifting from the left to the right side as different things happen at different points of the screen. So let's add some background music right here. So again, we're going to add a component an audio source and then we just have to feed it in the soundtrack that we want to use. Now I also um, showed you I went to get the 8-bit free uh, tracks here and there's a couple of tracks that come with this. I'm just going to grab this one that says combat and I'm going to add that in. So we're going to go to the main camera. I'm going to drag this into its audio sources combat 8-bit music and then we'll hit play and, and um, we want it to play on awake. We also want it to loop. This is a looping clip. That way if when we run to the end of this clip it'll just start back over at the beginning. So let's just see what this sounds like. Okay, so you can hear that the music is all playing and you can hear all the sound effects, but we don't really have much control over the balance here. Uh, it sounded to me like the background music was a little too loud and we couldn't clearly hear the other sounds. So that's where we get into the other part of audio, which is being able to use what's called an audio mixer. Uh, so we could go into each of these sources and we could change like volumes and parameters and things like that all in them. Or uh, what we can do here in Unity is we can make an audio mixer and we can have them all assigned to different channels and then we can uh, control the different types of sounds individually here. So let me show you how to make an audio mixer. An audio mixer is uh, an asset that we make in our project panel. So you go to create and there's one right here called audio mixer. That's going to give me this new audio mixer. Let's just give it a name here. We'll just call this our game mixer. So you can have more than one of these if you need to. And then in my audio mixer you'll see that it's got a suspend, it's got threshold volumes, it's got some different modes here. But if you open this up it's got um, it's got a master group, 
and it's got a snapshot. So if I double click the audio mixer, I'll get the audio mixer panel that opens up. So let's actually dock this. So it comes in with a master channel and I can actually add other groups. So I want to group here. Let's rename it. I want to group here and this is going to be my background music. And then I'm going to add another group to the master. It's important that you keep selecting master because otherwise you can put groups inside of groups. So I just want to add another group here. And I'm going to call this my sound effects. All right. So now what I can do is I can go to all my things that make sound. So I can go to the ball. And in its audio mixer, I can assign it to a mixer group. So I can just click the little circle here to see my mixer groups. This has a sound effect on it, so let's assign that to the sound effects group. So it will be controlled by that. We can go to our uh, prefab explosion here, and we can assign him also to the sound effects group. And then we can go to the camera, and we can assign the output from the camera to the background music group. So now we have um, the different sounds that are happening in our game all assigned to a mixer group here. So if when I play, you're going to see the, way, the uh, volume levels showing here. And we'll be able to set the volume with these sliders up here. We can also solo and mute and do all sorts of other things here as well. So let me hit play and we'll just see what that sounds like. I'm going to bring the volume down here so you can hear me talking, but when you're in play mode, you'll get this button here, edit and play mode, so you can click that and then we can see what's happening as it goes. So this is the master volume which affects everything, so I'm going to put that back up to zero and then I'm going to pull just the background music one down. So now I'm able to just affect the background music level here. So this is where I can balance how loud I want that background music to play. So maybe we'll try something like this. And then of course I can mute that for now if I want to so that I can you can hear me talking again. And then we can also go in here and play with the sound effects. So let me play the game and hear some sound effects. You can kind of see where the level is playing on those. Let's see if we can get a few more. Alright, so if we turn the background music on, we can see how we need to adjust these in relation to each other. Alright, so let's see how this sounds. Alright. Alright, so one thing I was hearing when I was testing that is the the explosion effects are kind of covering up the uh, the bounce effect of the ball. So we could either put those into two different groups, or we could go in and we could play with the actual audio source. Let's go ahead and add another group here. So maybe we'll rename this one to Explosions. And then let's make another new one here. And let's call this uh, ball sounds. All right, so now I've got another one. Now I just have to go out here and make sure that the explosion on my prefab explosion here is set to the explosions. It is. And then let's go to the ball and let's uh, make sure he is set to the ball sounds. Okay, so now that means I should be able to pull the explosions down a little bit. And then let's go ahead and test this out again and see how it sounds. Alright, I think that sounds a little bit better 
like that. We can also maybe just pull it down just slightly more here. Let's try like a negative eight. We'll test it one more time. We're just trying to get a rough balance here. All right, now I think I pulled it down a little too much. So let's put it back up to like maybe a negative five. And then we can kind of keep tweaking them as we like. So there we're breaking out the different types of sounds. And if we put different kinds of explosion sounds in there, we could add them all to the explosion channel. If we added different sounds to the ball, depending on what it hit, we could add that to the ball sounds panel. And that gives us the ability to control all of our volumes of our music and all of that. We can also access this mixer from scripts as well and we can override settings and change settings dynamically as we need to. We could expose uh, this in a menu so that the player could kind of uh, balance his own sounds or set how loud the background music is uh, uh, in relation to other things or even just turn these different things on or off if they don't want any background music at all. So it gives a lot of flexibility. We've really just touched the bare minimum, uh, bare bones types of things you can do with the audio mixer. This goes really deep. If you are into sound and into mixing sound, then there's a lot here that you'll like inside of Unity. So there we go. We've added some background uh, music. We've added some uh, effects to the ball and some explosions and some bounces and all of that. And I invite you just to find other sound effects, put them in your game, you know, uh, it really can add a lot to the feel of your game, the excitement, the fun, the energy, uh, to put good sounds into your game and immerse your player a little bit more in it. So that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any uh, questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get to those as quick as I can. Hope you're finding this useful and enjoy the rest of your day.